Hey everybody, this is JW here, and welcome to Paleo Presentation number two. So, what did dinosaurs really sound like? I know what you're thinking. Obviously, like this. But, did they really make those sounds? Well, we don't know for sure, because Dinosaurs have been gone for 66 million years, and voice boxes are made of flesh, and they don't intend to fossilize. But scientists are always up to these kinds of challenges. Like, for instance, could dinosaurs really have roared? So as a kid growing up in the mid-late 90s, that's how I've always known dinosaurs, always stomping around, roaring at each other, and honestly, I loved it. I loved it. Even as a teenager, still got a kick out of it. And even as an adult right now, I still love them. I love hearing dinosaurs roar. But I think it's more interesting to know what they really sounded like. We'll start with T-Rex. What did a T-Rex really sound like? And I know, you're probably thinking like this. Boy, my head being right all the time. So by combining the sounds of a baby elephant, tiger roars, and alligator growls, that huge iconic roar of a T-Rex in Jurassic Park made audiences jump out of their seats. So for decades, we could only speculate what the sound of a T-Rex is. So sound designers used some of the scariest noises in the animal kingdom, the howls of wolves, the roars of tigers, the screeching of elk, and the trumpeting of elephants. And then you get sounds like these. But to know what dinosaurs really sounded like, we have to look at their closest living relatives, the birds and crocodilians, all of which are members of the archosaur family. And all three are descended from a common ancestor, but then took different evolutionary paths. So researchers at the University of Texas have been doing some studies on birds and crocodilians, and they stated T-Rex could not have roared because birds and crocodilians don't tend to roar. Instead, T-Rex would probably produce a much more haunting kind of sound. So you can actually learn what, what an animal sounds like by looking at its ear bones. So scientists created a 3D model of a brain case of a T-Rex and, and looked at the inner ear bones, which are actually the same shapes as those of birds. And the sound of the bird hears is in relation to its size. Small birds create and hear high-pitched sounds. Large birds create and hear low-pitched sounds. So T-Rex with the ear bone shaped like a bird would have been able to communicate with low frequency sounds, even sounds that are much too low for us to hear. So birds and crocodilians would have communicated with something called closed mouth vocalization, meaning they had their mouths closed but would but still been able to make noises, mostly um, lower noises. And these sounds would have traveled through miles and miles away to get across some, you know, other members of their kind. So get ready, everybody. You're about to hear the possible sound of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it would have sounded something like this. <sighs> Just imagine yourself walking out in the woods and you would not only hear this sound, but you would feel it as it runs down your spine and it gets louder and louder as it draws closer to you. This is the same kind of feeling we see in horror movies, where we hear like these really ghostly, eerie sounds, usually like when it's dark or something, or even when it's daylight, you can hear these scary sounds like in the distance. So you don't really need to like, you don't really need like a in your face kind of scary. It's actually more scary when you hear or feel the scary thing rather than see it. Because once you see it, now you're used to it. The trick is, you know, to get away from it. <laughs> When it comes to dinosaur sounds, most of the studies have been done on these guys, the hadrosaurs, 
also known as duck-billed dinosaurs because of, their, because of their snouts. These are often referred to as the cows of the Cretaceous. So let's take a look at this beauty queen, the Parasaurolophus, known for its long curved crest, which paleontologists once thought to be a snorkel to help the dinosaur breathe underwater, but of course, that theory has been tossed out because one, there's no opening. So now we believe it was used as a resonating chamber used to make sound. So we have to look inside the skull of Parasaurolophus. The crest contained a series of tubes, which are actually similar to the tubes on a trombone. So to make sound, Parasaurolophus, even when it had its mouth closed, it would push air out of its lungs, up through the windpipe, through the nasal passages, and out through the nostrils. The sounds would have also created vibrations, and would have sound something like, um, like a boat horn. <laughs> Here's the cool part. In 1995, scientists over at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History took a well-preserved Parasaurolophus skull, put it through a CT scan, and were able to somehow digitally recreate the call of Parasaurolophus. And these were their results. How cool is that? Now, of course, this is all based on speculation, so there's no way of knowing for sure if these are the absolute sounds of dinosaurs, so therefore, we'll probably never know the real sounds. But in paleontology, you should never say never, because we might be able to find the answers we've been looking for. I mean, we've already figured out the coloring in some dinosaurs, so who knows? Maybe we will find the true sounds, maybe we will figure out the true sounds of dinosaurs. You never know. But I think when it comes to science, we should be open to more possibilities and not just always rely on what's in front of us and then just, just stop there because we're not going to get any farther. We should be open to, lot, to, to more possibilities. That way we can create more ideas, test those ideas, accept the ones that work, reject the ones that fail. So yeah, we should be more open to many possibilities. Like, for example, just because Earth is the only planet that supports life doesn't mean that there's no life on other planets. You never know. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my presentation, and um, I'll try and do more as much as I can. And um, so if you found this interesting, hit like and go ahead and subscribe. And um, until then, peace out.